now! All right, hello and welcome to the Match Day Vlogs YouTube channel. As always, please remember to smash that like button and hit subscribe because it really does, really does make it into the channel. We're here at St Mary's Stadium for the Championship Clash of Southampton FC versus Queen's Park Rangers. But our minds are dominated by the news of the last, effectively, well, 12 to 24 hours, really, of Nathan Teller having a medical by Leverkusen and now realising that Shalem's isn't here. Um, not in the team sheets at all, not even in the stadium. And it kind of feels like he's on the way out as well. Um, it's, it's a tricky one, this, isn't it? Because I think at the beginning of the transfer window, we all thought Teller was maybe going to be snapped up by Burnley for 15 million quid. Leverkusen to come in and slap 20 million quid on the table. And it's kind of like, it puts us in a different position, really, doesn't it? I mean, I think... 20 million quid for Teller is a decent decent bit of business, but you've got to think of what it's going to take away from our chances of the promotion. Um, I'm torn on it really, but if Shea goes, I'm particularly particularly worried, and I think we really need to do a lot of business in the next six days or so, but is that left you in tatters? I wouldn't say tatters, because what I'm looking at now is it's club that have a, almost an excess of, what was it, almost 200 mil now in this window? So right now, I'm just like, alright, well We've got all the money to spend, and it's a point to prove now. So we'll see where we are this time next week, for me, to be honest. We'll see when that window closes, where we are then will really sort of dictate how I'm going to feel about it. Um, no, we've got Downs and Frazier to see today. So bright side of life. Let's see what that's got. We have most of from them, but it's not great, is it? It doesn't feel great. It's not great. Uh, but looking at the team sheets, I mean, we do have Amo Amayor uh, Stein, which looks pretty good. Uh, Stuart Armstrong is in midfield. Alcaraz is back fit so that's all looking good of course we've got Ryan Fraser on the bench uh, but no Mason Holgate I'm quite surprised with Fraser being included I mean that was done last night wasn't it well I think he was pretty much ready to go anyway because I think he was meant to be playing that behind closed doors game against Brentford in the week I think Holgate was meant to be in that game as well I think that's what that game was meant for that 2-1 went over Brentford but instead it all seemed to be pushed and delayed a little bit but um, I think Fraser knows the system because he's worked with Russell before same for Downs you know I sort of thought Downs wouldn't start today because he had the illness and he might not be up to fit but yeah. I think a lot of these players know what they're doing yeah. and it's kind of like if you, if you sign a player in the Prem at the beginning of the week you see them maybe they're just good, good to go and given the fact that how we are liked by two players today probably wasn't expected probably a little bit quick but not, not surprised not surprised not surprised indeed I mean for me going back to the old transfer situation I'm, I'm kind of I'm a bit worried that, we, that Joel Perot went on to lead so I, mean, I kind of thought that that meant Shea was staying but the club have had to make a stance and maybe thought that Joel Perot wasn't worth 12 million quid and they've got their eyes somewhere else but where? Not, not to put long term factors into this but 12 mil is Joel Perot the, the, the striker that's going to see you through into the Premiership and I think if Saints want to spend that kind of money they want someone with a bit of progression in them that's what you think 15 million for Shea Charles you know, maybe they're thinking... 12, 12 apparently. Exactly. So apparently, maybe they're thinking 12 mil for a player that's going to do well this season, but maybe not cut it next season, or a player that's going to be going to absolutely rinse it this season and be something worth next season. But I don't know. I don't know what's going on right now. All I know is that I'm ready to watch a football game, yeah. and that's what we're here for. That is what we're here for. It's Queensland Rangers up next, who have Armstrong in their side as well. So um, that's looking, looking like their threat. I mean, a lot of people are banking on this as an easy home win, but we'll certainly see about that, you know, with us being down without Teller and Adams. But, you know, there should be enough in this side to still get a result here today, but we shall see. They'll certainly be going for it. It's a sellout crowd here at St Mary's, and it looks like QPR are taking a full allocation, so we're hoping for a decent atmosphere and a home win. Anyway, right, kickoff coming up.
is number five, Jack Stevens. The Jack's replacement at making his debut for the Saints, number four, Flynn Downs. So Charles has set it back, Flynn Downs, defensive of mid. So we do see him playing together often. We do see them playing together often. Yeah, he'll put on the funk kit. Yeah. I think sure. he's just... It's half time here at St Mary's Stadium. We currently have Hampton 1, QPR 1. We have not got a clean sheet yet again. A rather mad uh, few minutes. Uh, the moment we scored, Sam Adozi with a great goal for Southampton just on the edge of the box here right in front of us uh, fantastic goal you can see it coming uh, really really pleased for him but then to basically go down the other end and concede uh, a lapse of concentration losing the ball on the, around the halfway line and all of a sudden ball comes into the box and we're in trouble and then the more worrying thing after that was the fact that we the ball was in our net yet again but it was thankfully ruled off for offside but Looking at the stats wise, I mean, 76 possession to Southampton in the first half looks very promising, but actually, QPR have had more shots on goal, more on target. Um, they're definitely playing the long ball, though. I mean, they've got their Sinclair Armstrong, who's basically hanging around with our centre backs the whole game, waiting for the ball to break away. But they're not, um, how are we feeling? I mean, they're not playing smart football, they're playing hit and hope. And to be fair, you know, their goal was a shot from distance has hit the post and gone in. So, as we were just saying, this time it's not even a shot on goal and we've still conceded you know a shot on target I think like you say 75% possession I think Adozi's looked really great down this wing I think Amiru has been sort of done a bit harsh down this wing he's not really been given the same sort of space to room to move but the fact that I think what Adam Armstrong has had maybe what 10 touches of the ball nothing really considered compared to where he, when he was at number 8 and how much Shea was getting involved it's kind of really different um, it does look like it, it looks like there's holes in this team yeah and it looks like we're quite disrupted as well. I mean, I can see the communication between Kyle Walker-Peters and Sam Amo Amior isn't quite perhaps what it was with Nathan Teller, but, you know, that's happened. Need to get over that one. Um, defensively, we had to make a change. Jack Stevens going off injured. Shea, Ad Shea Childs. Shea Adams on the brain. Shea Childs dropping back in the centre-back with Flynn Downs being brought on as the number six. He's looked, looked okay, actually. He looked pretty composed. Um, and then we did score after that to be fair but he's looked okay yeah I think I think Downs has looked really really good actually I think he's a nice level head in that midfield it's not like someone's come on and doesn't know what they're doing he seems to settle quite nicely my main concern is Manning he looks really exposed on that wing and he seems to be beaten quite a lot and there's too many stray passes um, I'm not sure who the stray pass well I think it went to a, for their goal who, who led that astray you see Russell going absolutely mental when, that's, when that pass went astray but it's that same thing again Manning slip last week led to a goal one little mistake one stray pass here has led to another goal another little mistake we just can't allow that 
We're not used to being punished in the championship quite like that. Uh, in the Premier League, you kind of expect it, and you know, either way, mistakes need to be need to be drawn out. But it is still one-one. I kind of feel that Russell Martin might be having a word with the boys in the dressing room. Might perhaps change a few things plan-wise, having seen how QPR takes this game. But QPR have done. QPR have uh, held themselves quite well, really. Similar to Plymouth, mate, where yeah. it, we look like we've got all of it in the world, and we've got all the possession, and we've got the ability to dominate the, the game. Game, but with just something slipping every time and not quite getting there so I'm hoping it's going to be the same as Sheffield and same as Plymouth where they just come out second half swinging because they've had a bit of a rollick in half time well, all to play for all to play for um, but certainly to get our first win here at St Mary's since March the 5th earlier this year would be very nice and um, yeah we could really do those three points to push on right anyway Second half coming up. Oh, no. oh. 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 Six minutes to stop his time here at St Mary's Stadium. It's currently Southampton 2, QPR 1. Adam Armstrong just been given man of the match after scoring the second goal for Southampton. Southampton here in possession. Just trying to play out of the game here. But I think it's been, a, it's been a decent performance. It's been ropey in places. But considering the disruption before the game and the disruption in the lineup, I've been... It's been okay. Do you know what? First half reminded me a little bit of last season in the sense where it, when we were playing at our best, we were like, these junctures are doing all right, but they could be a bit more here. Then Ryan Fraser coming on, changed the game. Adam Armstrong dropping into weight, changed the game. We're learning this team still as we go, and this is another learning curve. It, it, however, what I did will say is we need to buy. We do need to buy. Keep it on the break here. Touchdown. Oh, lucky. Get it out! Oh my goodness, we certainly do not make it easy. <laughs> QPR player basically just cut the ball back across. It was right in the five yard box when we smashed in. Thankfully, there was a seven player that went in, but oh my goodness. About a minute and a half left to be played here. This would, should have happened, be the first win that Southampton has seen here in the league since the 5th of March 2023. So we are due one. Corner flag now, please, boys. Corner flag. Another one. He's blown, and there it is. I thought you'd like on Shetsky. We'll see you in the next one. All right, see ya. Oh, oh, oh.